All right, this is going to be Tinkercad Lab, uh, second Tinkercad Lab, so this is week number three. The title for this lab is Basic and Other Logic Gates. And what we're going to do in this lab, we're going to build one main circuit, and then we're basically going to swap a bunch of different chips into that circuit to test out the, uh, the different properties of those chips. Uh, and verify the truth table for each of those different types of, of logic gate chips. So, types that we're going to use, they're all listed here. If you look there, you can see the actual diagram for each one, which shows the internal wiring of those chips. So these are all, I believe they're all 14-pin uh, integrated circuits. And what this little diagram show is which leg of the chip connects to which uh, input or output on each little gate that's in there. So each of these chips uh, contains one type of gate and it contains multiple versions of that gate. So for example, the chip that ends in, uh, let's look at this one here, for example, the 74XX08, 74 is, I think, the series. XX can mean a couple different things. That's just a placeholder for the type. Uh, I think in this lab, the hard version of the lab, we always use L, basically you'll see SN74LS08N. That LS is the specific type of chip. The 08 is the uh, what type of gates it actually is. So what you'll see is that when we do this in Tinkercad, I think all of ours are HS instead of LS, but they operate basically the same. There's slight differences, but they operate basically the same. 08 means what kind of gates are actually there. So 08 is going to be two input and gates. So they look like that. And as you can tell from this, Pin number one and two are inputs. Pin number three is an output. And then there's another gate located at four, five, and six. Another one at eight, nine, and 10. And another one at 13, 12, and 11. Another thing you'll notice with these chips, you must connect power and ground or zero volts to each of these chips in order for them to work properly. So typically on one of these power versus BCC, that is your 5 volt power that will always be connected to pin 14. That's pretty common for almost everything we'll use. And then 0 volts will connect to pin number 7. Okay. So let's look at this lab. So we are going to build something that looks kind of like this. And circuit wise, it looks like this. So this is very similar to what we built in lab number 2, except now we're adding this chip in here. So very first one we're going to verify the AND gate. So let's start by building up our breadboard with our power supply, our resistors, and two uh, switches on it so we can switch and make logic ones and logic zeros. We also have one output LED as well and as you'll see that is pretty much the same circuit we're going to use and most of these setups, the only difference is we will be changing out the uh, the chip in here. One part G actually uses three inputs. Everything else uses two. So we'll actually set up the circuit to do three inputs. And we'll just use however many we have to use for that part of it. So let's build that circuit. And I'm going to do one or two things just slightly different to make it easier for me to understand and follow. And probably easier for me to demonstrate as well. So we're going to do, I'm going to use the large breadboard, I think. Actually, no, I'm going to use a small breadboard. Yeah, we'll do that. A small breadboard. Do that here, and 
we need to do power to that. So last week we used the battery. This week I'm going to use the power supply. So this basically works exactly like the battery, except the one difference is you can actually change the voltage that comes out of it, which will be some interesting things. We can play with that a little bit. I'm just going to bring in all my components here that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a multimeter. I'm going to bring in all the chips that I'm going to use, just so I can close out the, uh, the window over here. There's my NAN gate, my NOR gate, and for XOR inverter three input NAND I think that's what it was three input NAND yeah I think that's all correct there's the seven chips I'm going to use all together A LED a six bank dip switch, some resistors, and some diodes, and I think that's it. So I'm just going to close this out now. And I'm going to start building this. I'll explain why I'm doing things as I go. So start off, this is always going to be the same. We're going to use two of these diodes. So we're going to have one that goes in, one that goes out. So power flow is power coming in. Goes in through the black, out through the silver. So this comes here, into there, to the red, out the black, like that. That's how that connects. Remember that we want to use this bottom bus. It's not connected automatically. We need to connect that ourselves. Do this. Try to keep things out of the way. And let's keep our colors straightened out. Let's make things easy to follow, easy to troubleshoot. Black for negative, red for positive. And I'm going to take that multimeter and just stick it on here so that we can tell what's going on. The negative goes to here, positive goes to here. And we'll probably do some things with this later just as a weight so I can verify what's going on. And if I simulate that, that should now show me a little bit under, we lose a little bit of voltage through these uh, diodes. So typically this, if we were using the battery pack, produces six volts. So let's just dial this up to six volts. You can do that here. You could also click on this and just type in six here. So this gives us some ability to change the voltage here, which might come in handy to us. And this looks very much like the power supplies in the 410 lab that we have on campus as well. All right, so let's look at this now. So now we need to set up this whole circuit over here. We did this last week. Let's stop this simulation. Oops. So let's drag this down here. I'm going to set this right about here, kind of in the middle of the board. I'll show you why in a minute why I'm going to do that. Now we're going to take these resistors. Resistors are going to go from the positive 
lining up with that first bank there. This is going to be a 4.7 kilo ohm. So yellow, purple, red. I'm going to do three of these. So I'm going to do copy and paste. And then copy and paste again. So I got three of those. That's putting power through resistor to each of these. And now I need to go the black wire here, connect those that side to the black. So if I flip that switch, it connects that to the zero volts. If this is not, it's just not connected, and then we have basically our logic one ready to go wherever we want it. The next thing we need is this output LED here. So this is going to be our result. So this is going to indicate whether we are our chip is producing a result or not. And this is going to be a 330 ohm resistor. So this is our brown brown, sorry, orange orange brown resistor. 330 ohm, and remember that goes from the negative to the cathode of the uh, LED, and then our output signal from the chip will go here. Now here's one thing I'm going to add to this. I'm going to add another three LEDs. Okay, so we are going to build another little circuit over here. The reason I'm going to do this is because I have a hard time figuring out when I flip those dip switches, am I giving logic zeros or logic ones? I can't remember. Is up? Is this a one or a zero? I can't remember which position is which. So I'm going to make some little lights over here that I'm going to use to help me tell what's what. Let's make... Oh, I shouldn't make these. Let's make them blue. Yeah, let's try blue. See what that looks like. We're going to make some blue lights over here. These, we need to remember to put our resistors over here as well. So I'm going to make a bunch of little test circuits, basically. And then we're going to connect up from here, and I'm going to connect these each to the was well, essentially the output of these switches. So we'll look at that right now. I'll run this simulation. So what you'll see here is see how those light up those are lit up right now so that is basically on 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 right now so if i turn that off you'll see how that goes dim so that is the off position that's the off position it takes a little bit of time to uh to go off but you can see how i can actually tell is that the on or off position right now A little bit of a time delay in there. You'll see how this clock up here actually changes when I switch this. You'll see a little bit of transition to show the lag. Oh, it's not showing it now. But basically that helps me determine when I'm doing my truth table. Uh, so I can kind of figure out, is it 0, 0, 0, or is that 1, 1, 1 right now? I have a hard time looking at the switch and determining that, but I can look at these lights and understand that's 1, 1, 1. That's 1, 0, 1. I can determine it that way. And just to help me a little bit more as well, I'm going to put in here... I'm going to call this call 
was a B and C. So I'll label those A, B, and C so I can tell what's what. All right, so that is my basic setup that I'm going to use for each of these labs going forward from here. So now let's try putting actually in a chip. So let's look at procedure A. So this is going to be the 08 chip, the AND gate. So let's scroll up here. Here is my 08 chip. And you can see when I do this, it says quad AND gate. So I'm going to place this on the board, and you can see this is like the uh, the dip switch that it actually spans uh, that little gap in the middle. So each of these pins here, this pin is now connected to this row of connection points here. It gives me lots of options. So on this here, you can see there's a on the, the actual PDF version of this, there is a couple little spaces here where it's asking you to fill in. And it's going to ask you to fill this in on the, uh, I believe, on the multiple choice questions as well. So VCC pin number and ground pin number. If we look at our chart, this is going to be the same for all of these. VCC is going to be pin number 14. Ground is pin number 7. So if you were doing this in the regular lab with a physical breadboard, you would need to count where the pins are and figure that out. This is very nice in Tinkercad because if you just hover on things, it actually tells you what each pin is assigned for. You can see that's input 4A. This one here is power. So this is pin 14, which is power. So we need to connect up that one to power. We need to connect up pin number 7 here, which is ground. We're going to connect that one to our ground or our zero volts. So this chip is now ready to go. So it is powered up and ready to go. Now, the other thing we're going to do here, we need to figure out what pin numbers. We need two inputs and one output. If we look on our diagram. Two inputs, one output. We have four different spots we could use here. It's typically always just start at the beginning here. So inputs on one and two, output on three. So input on 1 and 2, you can see input 1A, input 1B, and then output on 3, which would be this one, output 1. So let's go input. So that's our input location there. Input goes to 1. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see this better. Input here. goes to 2, output wire on 3, that's our output, that's going to jump over to there. Now, just for fun, I'm going to make these, let's make that orange, turquoise, and let's make this purple. Okay, so that should be this one here for number one. So let's give this a test. If I have that wired correctly, let's see what we get. So this is the AND gate. So what we know about the AND gate so right now, this is 0, 0 combination. That is 1, 0. This is 1, 1. That one should be producing my result right now. If it doesn't, so I have something wrong. Look at everything here. I 
I'm just going to test this by connecting this directly to power. See if that runs. So that does run. What is wrong here? Let's check this. Two volts, I should be switching it. What is incorrect here? I'm going to try putting this directly to power and this directly to power, see if that works. So that works. My input signals do not. Increase these resistances, so that make a difference. All right, so these are bringing me down over here.
Okay, so that... At 2,000 ohms it works. Okay, so let's set that as what we want to try to do. Let's make these 2,000 ohms. So the problem there was, and we'll get into why this is a problem. So this is enough to light these up a little bit. The, the way that it's dividing the voltage here, there was not enough voltage to trigger this chip at that voltage level. So this was drawing too much power over here to activate this chip. But by changing these resistors, that draws less power over here, more was available to run the chip. So now it is working it's working okay. These are now dimmer, but we can still tell what's going on. So 2000 is a good resistance to use over here. Everything still works. And we will go from there. So let's go with that. Okay, so this is 1-1. One, one. We get light on. 0-1 gives us light off. Zero, 0, gives us light off, and 1, 0, gives us light off. That is proving out the truth table of the AND gate. All right, let's try another one. So that would be uh, that would be part A of the lab. The other thing it's asking you for here it's asking you to put in the Boolean expression for this. The Boolean expression for this one is this would be y is equal to a and b. That would be our expression. So let's do the next one. This is the OR gate. Wires up almost identically. The only thing we're changing is the chip. We need the pin numbers. Again, if we look at the, this is the 32 chip. If we look at the diagram for the 32 chip, the diagram is identical. So we're going to take this chip out. Grab the 32 chip. right here and we'll place this one in so we need to make sure that we place it in the right spot remember pin 14 goes on this power pin 7 goes on this negative power and then 1 2 and 3 is what we're using for ins and outs and now let's simulate this one so 1 0 give us a 1 1, 1 gives us a 1. 0, 1 gives us a 1. And this is kind of slow bleeding down, but 0, 0 gives us a 0. And that way you can kind of see how the time... The time lag up here, you can see how it starts counting in different time units when it's bleeding down like that. So that is part B of the lab. And for this one, that is represented as A plus B. Y equals A plus B. Part C of the lab is the inverter. And 
This is the 04 gate. Now this one wires a little bit differently. It only has the one input wire. We're just going to remove that one. Let's we'll stick it over here. Sorry, stick it over here for now. That's on an unused pin. I could just delete that wire if I wanted. And if we look at our diagram here, the inverter, input on one, output on two. So let's grab that wire there. Whoops. Input on one, output on two. What we should see here is that this is off, this is on. If this is on, this is off. Okay, so a 1 here gives us a 0 here. A 0 here gives us a 1 here. That is the truth table for the inverter. I don't have a way to make the bar here, the bar symbol, so I'm not going to draw that one. That is part C. Part D, this is the NAND gate. This is the new one this week. The NAND gate is 0, 0. The NAND is the universal gate. Output goes back over to 3. And then is this guy here. So 1 and 2 are the inputs, 3 is the output. 1 and 2, 3 is the output. So 0, 0 gives us the light. 1 and 0 gives us the light. 0 and 1 gives us the light. 1 and 1 is the only combination that gives us no light. So it's just the opposite of the AND gate. And that is part D of the lab. Part E is the NOR gate. It's the O2 chip. It's the O2. Now this one is actually wired differently. Output on one, two and three are the inputs. Two and three are the inputs. Oops. Output on one. So wire that up like that. One and one gives nothing. O and one gives nothing. One and O gives nothing. O and O gives us a light. That is NOR. Part F is the XOR, the exclusive OR. This is the 86 chip. the way we originally were. So in, in, out. Simulate. So zero, zero gives us nothing. One, zero gives us signal. One, one. 
does not give us a signal. Zero, 01 gives a signal. So both on gives us nothing. Both off gives us something, gives us nothing. One or the other gives us something. That is part F and then part G is our final chip. This is the 10. And this is our three input NAND. So we have input, input, imp. Sorry, let's look at how this is wired. So 1, 2, 13, and then 12 is the output. So output on 12. That's up here, output 1. And this is input 1C right here, so we need to bring in another wire. Go there. Input 1C. Now we would need all three of these on to get us an output light. Sorry, all three of them off is the only, all three on is the only thing that will give us that off any other combination. will give us lights. This is the only combination that gives us off, which is all three of these guys on. Okay, so that is it. That is all of the combinations. Using all of those, those are seven different types of chips. We've proven out the tables for each one. You should be able to write the uh, the boolean expression for each one as well and then do the questions down below do this all on uh, answer those on blackboard and then put a name on here so name student number uh, week three. Save that, and that should be your lab to submit for this week. All right. Good luck. Hope you had some fun with that, and we'll see you next week.